This is Gary Atensu with CNTV, and today we're in Denver, Colorado. I am here with Carol Messenger, Higher Self Clairvoyant. Since 1977, this award-winning visionary author, through the use as a messenger of angels, has been helping us enlighten us into the new humanity. Carol, thanks so much for joining us here today. Let's start off a little bit with yourself. Um, November 2nd, 1975, 2 o'clock in the morning, a new light came on, and basically you began a journey into a new industry that you had nothing, knew nothing about at that time. Share with us how you got involved. It was a, it was a spontaneous event. Uh, it, was, it came on after a few weeks of strange occurrences. Basically, I was in a life-threatening situation, and these abilities came to the forefront to save my life, my sanity, my mind. And uh, I didn't know at the time that it was the beginning of something. That was the process that happened. It, actually, that process took about six and a half years to finally, like, oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. It was pretty powerful. Uh, but it was like it picked me up and turned me around 360 degrees, the opposite direction in my life. And for the first time in my life, suddenly I had like a specific focus, a specific function. This is why I was here, and it was very clear at that moment. But I had no idea it was coming. It just, it was just came upon me just came upon you. I mean, quite honestly, that was a big change that happened many, many years ago. Right. We fast forward to today. Here we are once again, a lot of changes going on in our world, yeah. not only locally, but globally. Um, really a transition of change that we're always going through. Does this somehow awaken a higher consciousness level for us? And is that a good thing? That's really, no, it doesn't look like that. And it doesn't feel like that. And, and it can be upsetting. There's a lot going on. But at the same time, I understand when I look, when I, when I tap in and I feel the bigger, the bigger picture, the, never before in human history have we been this conscious, have we been this aware. And the only reason we are aware that things are a problem is because we didn't know before it was a problem. Hmm. We're troubled by it because something tells us that things need to change for the better. And that means uh, that is a personal call for every individual at whatever place they are in their life. Wonderful. Well, we hear a lot about New Age, not only today, but for years past. When did the New Age actually begin? And is it a, a period of transitions all the way through that uh, we can keep looking forward to? Mainly what I know from my source, which is the universal consciousness, is that the New Age actually began like in the 70s, 75, 77, thereabouts. And, that, and so people since then get it more quickly and more easily than those of us who had to learn it the hard way. <laughs> uh, folks that are actually um, born around those times, um, are, are they kind of a, a special leaders for all of us in raising our social awareness as well as our own personal responsibilities to each other? We all have, we all are. I, I do feel that uh, there were obviously uh, aware people, gifted people, let's say tapped in before that. But certainly it feels like there is more of it now than there has been. I, it makes me think of the harmonic convergence in 1987. That was the first one. And who knew it would actually be a major shift in consciousness all over the planet had no what's what I find really fun is when you look back decade to decade and you see oh my goodness look what happened yeah. because it's at the time it's hard to see it but when you can go back 10 20 30 years then it's like uh, more obvious that things really are changing and that that gives us hope gives us help looking back, being able to experience that as we're living right now in the present. Um, do folks, are we somehow losing sight of the fact that life is a blessing and not just a hindrance? It certainly feels that way. <laughs> I wonder that. I mean, do you see that as you're able to sit down with folks and, and talk with them? Is that something that you come across? What I feel is most important is that we all strive to just be the best human being we can be, whatever that is and it's different for everyone. And uh, with that in mind, it, it seems what I get repeatedly in the information um, is that we are all here to help others in some way. And it doesn't matter what our gifts are, we all have gifts. 
We all have gifts. One of those gifts uh, for yourself is that of a clairvoyant. Share with us definition. What is a clairvoyant and how can it help uh, folks that are possibly viewing today? For, for a very long time, I didn't know that's what it was <laughs> because I came around, I came to all of this through experience and not through t being taught. And so it's like, oh my goodness, is that what I'm doing? <laughs> because I was always able to hear uh, the inner voice uh, and to discern, I was always able to discern the difference between what's the inner voice and what is something else. When is it telepathy? When is it somebody else thinking to you? There are all these things that are going on. Clairvoyance is really uh, not only getting, for me, I get mental pictures. Okay. Uh, some people see, I see in my head. Uh, but it's more of, clairvoyance is more than just pictures or vision, visions. It's also that sense of knowing that comes from, uh, with practice. Uh, just a recognition that this is something different that you can you, there's a, the knowing is like wow you just kind of, there's a clear sense of real I really get it but when I'm in that energy in that space I'm not in the I'm, I'm not personal it's not personal I am totally in the zone where I'm just allowing this higher energy whatever it is right. to direct whatever's happening and give people whatever they need to give them guidance in their own lives and and, and we're all able to do things in different ways like you say basically it's a practice for you that you have honed into can the everyday person can they hear the divine we all are capable of it even the Bible talks about it. Uh, in fact, when I went through my crisis in 75 and I had no idea what was going on, uh, the first thing I did was turn to prayer for the first time in 15 years because I, was, I, was always, I always followed my own path. Uh, and yet I didn't know at the time until later that I had the protection of angels and guides watching me, taking me through this situation to get me through it. And, that, and, and, it's, and, and that's why I think I hear angels. But it's an inner voice. We all have, be still, and know, and be still and know that God is here. The phrase from the Bible, we all are capable of that inner knowing. It's that, it's whatever it, conscience, whatever it is, it's not us. It's, it's that deeper part of us that is tapped into a different, to that uh, whole self that we are. It's not our everyday personality, and it's not us talking to ourselves. It's like someone else, or whatever it is, giving us guidance and direction, and only for the good. Only for the good. Let me ask you, folks are looking for practical ways um, to possibly tap into this. Um, one of those is meditation that we hear a lot about. Is that something that you have uh, been able to experience to basically um, create that inner stillness? I have personally found, and it's drummed into me every day, <laughs> that some form, any form of meditation or meditative experience which is repetition, routine, a constancy of place and time, dedicated to honing in and bringing in the focus of the higher self, whatever we call it, that brings us into that still place. And um, that actually more than anything else, and it's free, <laughs> that, that one tool alone is the most important, combined with rhythmic deep breath to f keep the focus. It bring, the rhythmic deep breath holds the focus and takes you deeper into that level of altered consciousness. That is interesting. This is something that you experience alone. One of the things I see out there is I watch the news, uh, I read the newspapers. I don't care if you're going through struggles, if you're poor, or even if you're rich and very successful. Sometimes people are feeling very alone. This is something that uh, you feel they don't have to be because you believe there are angels around us all the time. Share with me about your, uh, the angels. All I know is, uh, number one, since my experience, I have no fear of death. Sometimes I'm fearless, which is a little scary. <laughs> uh, because I always, because I've had so many things not happen or you know, when disastrous situations could have happened and it just kind of like missed me, 
uh, many situations like that, including uh, tornado, flash flood, uh, threats, danger. But I'm always aware of a sense of protection and guidance. And for that reason, I am very comfortable being alone because I know I'm not really. I just kind of sense this connection. And, 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 and I connect with another human being now and then. <laughs> but it's not something I personally need because I feel, I just feel connected most, almost all, most of the time. Interesting. So basically, uh, we too have the ability to call on really an army of angels to help us out. Um, is this something they are, are they something you see, something you hear, or it's just a presence that you feel? It's a presence I feel for the most part. I would say the writings are from the angels through the inner voice. Even though I'm at the same, there are many names to call it. I know it's the higher self, the oversoul the universal consciousness, the I am, it's all of these things. It doesn't matter what we name we give it. It's God, whatever we right. give it. But I do feel that the angels are a strong, specific uh, guidance behind that, sending the information. All I know, I don't see them. I wish I did. <laughs> cool. Now, there were a couple of situations in the past. I mean, I've had a couple of dreams where Archangel Michael came to me, and it's like, cool. And told me who he was, and I'm going, cool. Wow. <laughs> Didn't expect it. And I had a situation prior, uh, several weeks prior to the dream where I had an odd kind of person cross my path and speak to me in a very odd way. And it kind of stuck in my mind. And, and I was told later, many weeks later in the dream, that was me. That was Archangel Michael. And I'm going, wow, I would never have thought. Because it was just something that kind of stood out as out of the ordinary. And, uh, but ordinarily, no, I, I, every, I see in my mind's eye whatever I see, most of, almost all the time. Interesting. One of the titles um, that you've been known of is that of a futurist. Is this something that the public understands, like we look back at the Bible and we see prophets? Um, is that something on the same lines? And uh, uh, personally speaking, the prophet Samuel, is that something you have some connection to? Futurist is what I realized because the information I've been getting is all about the future in general, about humanity, and, the evolu and we are currently in a major evolutionary leap, uh, the second only since humanity began, which is not on Earth, but way back. Um, this is the information I've been getting since 1980. Repeatedly, decade after decade, when I got new information, decades apart, I'm getting consistently, consistently the same information. I'm going, must be something. And, and now I'm really excited because two years ago I started watching Through the Wormhole. And, I'm, and it's like, it blew my mind. How can I doubt myself anymore? Because cutting edge thinkers on the planet, theoretical physicists are saying the same thing about a lot, all the stuff I've been getting. And I'm going, oh my, it's, it's incredible and it's very exciting. I, Samuel, um, I was told, uh, is, is my oversoul, which is basically like in the Seth books in the 70s. Jane Roberts had all these Seth books. He was her oversoul. That's basically the big self. That, and I'm like an earth person, an earth extension expression of that great self. Uh, and Samuel was one of the name, one of the lives. And it turned, and I, I get information. I don't know, you know. I just get it right, and then I check after the fact, and I'm going, "Oh my God!" Turns out he was a prophet. <laughs> Turns out he started a school for prophets. Had no idea. And I think basically it's the same thing that clairvoyance and people like that are doing. And there's, you know, there's a, quite a few people around on the planet who are doing this, and they're all, they're all quite impressive. That is wonderful. Viewers, take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. What you're going to see is her website. On the website, first of all, you can learn a little bit more about her and her journey that began back in 1975. This is a journey that basically keeps calling her into a path of helping people to be possibly the best they can be um, and basically understanding that we're all going through this together. Uh, basically globally or locally. You can also sign up right there to her email because she will keep you apprised of new blogs that she has out there. 
as well as uh, many books that have been written that uh, could help you in an electronic download form. One of the things folks out there that want to basically be helped by your services, um, what do they need to do? Do they contact you? And is this something that takes place in person, on the phone, email, or all the above? All the above. Basically, the best thing to do is to go to my website where I have everything linked in. Uh, for the most part, for personal readings, uh, I do phone readings, and I also do email readings, so it doesn't matter where people are, and we don't have to, if it's email, we don't have to set a time. If it's a phone, then we make it a phone appointment, and I schedule those in advance. Uh, for folks that are out there that are nervous about doing something like this, what takes place uh, during one of those sit-downs with you? Is there a discussion, or what are they trying to, uh, is there a problem they're trying to alleviate? Share with us a little bit there. I prepare in advance to that person's energy. I do like a deep meditation ahead of time to tap in. Um, and then it begins with kind of sinking into their energy. I have a little routine I go through that I have learned little things that I've picked up that get me into that, into the space, into the zone, I call it. Um, and then once I feel like the connection, and then we begin. And I just, uh, I start reading with, I may start with my eyes closed until I've got the focus. And then gradually, and, uh, and just flow with whatever I'm getting initially about the person. And then open it to questions uh, and just see what we get. <laughs> start general and then gradually get more specific as we, if we need to break it down. And, yeah, so. So there really is a dialogue going on between the two of you if they'd like to talk or ask a question. At a point. But, at, yeah, a point. at a point after they've, you basically have uh, received everything that you can and then you move on from there. That, right. that is interesting. Yeah, it's fun too. In, in fact, I'm as blessed as they are because I get the vibe. <laughs> I get to be in that space, and it's like, oh, my God, this is it's such a cool energy. And it's so neat to be there, just to be present in that vibration. It's really powerful and empowering, and just it's just, it feels good. You say that we are going through a hopeful transitional change. What is it that you're hoping for the future, um, for the rest of your life here? For my life? Uh, I, I seem to be a very prolific writer. And there is just no end to material. And uh, I will spend the rest of my life publishing everything that I get. And, I'll, you know, I get material about angels. I have a lot of, in fact, there's going to be a whole lot more of that. I'm publishing as much as I can every single year. Um, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of books on the spiritual path. What is it? What is it? How do we do it? The thing, I, the thing I like most about the information is it's very practical and down-to-earth. It's very grounded. What do we do with it? You know, because otherwise it's, it's of no use to us. If we can't apply it here and now today in our own lives, then it's, then it's of no use. So everything I get is very pragmatic. Um, I, and then, of course, and I get a great deal of information about the transformation that we are all going through personally and as a, and as a human race. Wonderful. Viewers, take a look at the bottom of the screen for the last time. You're going to see her contact information right there. You're also going to see her website address. Like you said, that is a great starting point because she makes available to you not only the books she has available, the e-downloads. She also uh, updates blogs consistently. But if you'd like, you can reach out to her and she will contact you, decide if basically a, a, an email or a phone dialogue is something that would work best for you or possibly that of even in person. That is the Carol Messenger, an award-winning visionary, author, basically helping folks through the new humanity located here in Denver, Colorado. This is Gary Atencio with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know.